Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the Inland Empire, and we are joined by Kerry Davis. He is the mayor of the city of San Bernardino, and I know your focus has been to bring the city back. I know you've worked mightily to do that. And recently you took a trip to Washington, D.C., and you're looking to enlist the White House as part of their Promise Zones. Give us a sense of what Promise Zones are. That's correct. Uh, we were back there with the team to try to put our message forward yes. to the... Uh, uh, department that administrates Which that. is which? Do you which know? is HUD. HUD, okay, Housing and Urban Development. And so we mm. had an opportunity to put forth our message. Mm. It was a team of about five or six of us, nice. uh, together with uh, Chief Berguan. Oh, sure. We had an opportunity. Police Chief. Police Chief mm -hmm. Jared Berguan. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it went well. We were well received. Uh, we have had a good team put together our package, and uh, I, I, think, I think that they appreciated uh, our uh, our our presence there. Sure, I understand it's a very competitive process. I know LA's South Los Angeles area got a small designation, but it's not easy to get. And, you know, forgive me, but now is probably a good time for San Bernardino to have a light shown on it with the bankruptcy and the tragedy of last December. Um, Bank San Bernardino, you know, can, ha can use the help. Is that fair? We absolutely can. Yeah. And with it comes a team right. of. Uh, uh, experts in government and right. so that would allow the city to have that edge when we're applying for additional grants. And is a promise zone similar to let's call it an enterprise zone? What exactly is a promise zone? No, promise zone allows you to have additional rankings. You get a preferential treatment uh -huh. and so you earn additional points when you are applying for grants. Grants and meaning federal grants. Federal grants, correct. Interesting. Okay, right. I understand. Aside from promise zones, I think it was in December you launched a quality of life initiative for your city, kind of homegrown, looking at the question of blight and otherwise. How's that going? It's going well. Um, when I first went, came into office, we had a uh, uh, team that we formed mm -hmm. with the business uh, group. And so they presented some of their concerns to us mm -hmm. back in September. And as a result of that, uh, we got together, we uh, worked with the department heads, mm -hmm. uh, police department, uh, fire department, parks department, public uh, works. And so as a result of that, a team was formed to be able to address some of the targeted areas in San Bernardino that need some additional concentration of help. And let's discuss that because it's hard to deny that under the prior regime of redevelopment, it was much easier for cities who had redevelopment zones to try to eliminate blight. Um, that tool is no longer available. And so what are you doing? From where are you getting funds to eliminate the scourge on the city when there is one? You're right. RDA did pull the rug out from right. beneath uh, many of cities. But the city then uh, does have the need, the need didn't go away. Of course. And so we've had to look within internally how mm -hmm. we could uh, fund that. And so we've been able to earmark a certain portion of a budget to be able to fund that because it will require additional labor to do that. We've been doing it on a under the current budget with a one day a week. Uh, and now uh, with the uh, current year, right. uh, we've uh, funded it for uh, that to be done four days of the week. Meaning, what are you doing one day a week or four days a week? The quality of life team is already out there on a oh, one day a week basis. And so this uh, next budget, this current budget cycle, we've added an additional amount of available so that we can add additional people mm -hmm. so that we could do it for four days a week. What about creating business improvement districts where businesses gather together and agree to tax themselves essentially as a way to revitalize their area with facade improvements or otherwise. Is that a thought? It, it is a thought. We don't have anything active right at this time, mm -hmm. but actually with the Promise Zone application, ah. there would be an opportunity to be able to encourage that. I also want to ask you about other ways that you're looking to improve your quality of life. I understand that as part of the bankruptcy, uh, there's a board that is looking into the long range property management plan. Is that accurate? Is that part of the bankruptcy? The, the, uh, actually, that's part of the wind down of the RDA. RDA. Okay. okay. I had a feeling as I was saying yeah. that. Yes. So, the, so talk to us about that because it is, it is appropriate. So with the dissolution of the RDA, all of those properties that were acquired right. during that process, they now have to be uh, identified as to one of three categories, either government use, 
for sale or for future development. Okay. And so that process had to be wrapped up in terms of getting DOF, the Department of Finance's approval, by December 31st of this year. And how is that going? I mean, presumably the market's turned around, so if you do sell some properties, you could make a, a bit of a profit and put that back in the general fund, no? Well, the ability to be able to act uh, on those properties first had to go through the DOF, the Department of okay. Finance. That approval had to be uh, achieved and we did that. Okay. Now moving forward the next step will be to identify the best use for those properties. Sometimes and you may keep them. That's right and mm -hmm. so now the work that's been done with our consultant has been to get us to this point and the next step would be to identify uh, a real estate developer that would help us identify what are the best uses for those properties. So now it, tr it transitions to a different stage. At the same time, you're looking to use uh, your dollars most efficiently, and at times that can mean outsourcing, uh, providing a public enterprise with the ability to provide services mm -hmm. to the city. It's a loaded issue, but be that as it may, uh, you have decided to outsource is it garbage collection? Is that right? Correct. And yeah, it's integrated us, waste. Yeah, talk to us about the thought process behind that. Well, as you know, as a uh, result of the bankruptcy and the recession, mm -hmm. uh, city finances and revenues have decreased. And so that resulted in not being able to maintain infrastructure, mm. as well as part of that is the equipment. With uh, oh. the conversion to Burtec, this will actually add a one time fee of $5 million franchise fee into the city's general fund and it will also then give us a annual additional amount of about 2.8 million dollars. But how do you make sure that garbage collection does not become an, I'll say, an unfair profit center? And these are the types of services where we don't have a choice in the matter and you know, one could argue it, it's appropriate for government to keep those services. One understands why San Marino took that step, but how do you balance those uh, goals? And Burtec has agreed to maintain rates okay. for a period of time. They certainly have to monitor their uh, their structure, as sure. you talked about. Right. But they have agreed to maintain rates and also some of the, the, the current routes. And in fact, they're going to increase the street sweeping oh, nice. to twice a month instead of right now the city can only afford to do it once a month. Let's talk about county fire. Uh, the city had had its own fire department. You are now going through the process of contracting with county fire. Not uh, unusual. There are many cities that don't have their own fire departments. They turn to county fire. But you know it's, it was a long history with your own department at least fire wise. How's that? Well, actually, actually, we're not contracting with the county. Oh, we are ex annexing into the county fire district. Is that how it works? Okay. okay. So it's a little bit different okay. because it could be a contract. Some cities do have contracts. So what's the difference? The difference is then that is taken over, and you don't, you're do not you not going through a contractual negotiation. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, and thanks so, for the, the clarification. So um, uh, LAFCO, which is the sure. Local Area Formation Commission, they on January 27th, they approved uh -huh. that application. And so then the next step is they go through a reconsideration process and then they go through a protest. And so it's probably April uh -huh. once we'll know whether or not we're going to be able to successfully move completely through that process. And if that is, then in July sometime would be the transition. Why is it preferable to be annexed in as opposed to contracting? Well, the uh, ability here is to actually provide some additional revenue resource for the general fund because with it comes some uh, a parcel tax that will actually then be used to help to fund that and that actually then provides some availability for the city then to readjust and reallocate some of those sources. Fascinating. Who knew? Who knew? His name is Kerry Davis. He is the mayor of the city of San Bernardino. We're in the Inland Empire today. I'm Brad Pomerantz, Charter Local Edition.